156,000 men took part in the largest amphibious invasion in history. At the time, it was codenamed Operation Overlord. Now, it's simply known as D-Day. D-Day was the greatest signal most operation in Western war. Its aim was to liberate Europe from four years of Nazi domination. And the first 24 hours were the most crucial. In this series, the incredible story of this momentous day is told minute by minute by the last surviving men who witnessed the horrors and victory unfold. Allied planets have been um, working for months and months, all in preparation for this 
one critical moment. The plan was ambitious. The Allies would land from the sea on five beaches stretching 50 miles along the Normandy coast. The Americans would land on the two beaches in the west, codenamed Utah and Omaha, whereas the British and Canadians would take the three in the east, Gold, Juno, and Saw. Ahead of the seaborne landings, two American airborne divisions in the west and a British airborne division in the east would land to protect the vulnerable flanks of the invasion from counterattack, secure roads and bridges, and attack the Germans wherever they found them. Seven minutes past midnight, June 6th, D-Day. Flying at 7,000 feet, six gliders crossed the Normandy coastline unopposed. Germany had lost air superiority. The Allies controlled the sky. On board these gliders are 181 men, oil engineers and soldiers from the Oxford and Bucks Light Infantry. Few of them have been in combat before. My name is Penny Bates, and I'm the daughter of Major John Howard, who was the commanding officer with the 57th Oxford and Buckinghamshire Light Infantry, who were part of the 6th Airborne Division on D Day. On D Day, Penny was just three months old. But since her birth, Major John Howard, a former policeman, had hardly seen her, nor her older brother, or his wife Joy. He had been in secret training for a mission that was to be the spearhead of the Allied invasion of Europe. The whole enterprise was called the coup de main, which is a French expression, meaning cut of the hand. And it is a surprise mission that that would involve taking two strategic bridges. These bridges spanned the Col Canal and the adjacent River Orme, about 500 yards to the east. Control of both bridges was vital to protect the beach landings from counterattack. The bridges were also needed undamaged, so supplies and reinforcements could reach paratroopers being dropped further east. They came into land, they were coming in at a steep trajectory um, and brought number one glider in to stop in front of the, the wire fences around that bridge. And there was this total silence. What a fantastic achievement. Climbers are not very sophisticated bits and counts. They are very scary to be in there, they just put together with canvas and wood. Um, but these guys are the pilots to have landed this thing absolutely at the exact spot that they were told to hit the dock at the side of Port Canal would be just absolutely brilliant. And I, I would say those guys deserve to be away across it. Major Howard's glider had landed exactly where he wanted it, just 50 meters from the eastern end of the bridge across the Orne Canal. At the western end of the bridge was a cafe. It was owned by the Gondre family, who had just gone to bed. My full name is Olive Gondre, and at the time of the Playboy issue on the 5th and 6th of June 1944, it's called the thing. We just settled, now was in Mum's bed. We had a tremendous crush in Mum's, and so we got very frightened. So quickly, Mum took me, we were checked, no time to take on clothes. In the house, which was dark, damp in the cellar, it was cold, it was horrible. Lieutenant Den Brotheridge was in charge of leading the actual assault on the bridge. Den and my father were terrific friends, and um, they got on enormously well. Den was a very good looking guy, but almost as certain he would be in a professional football, and he was immensely popular with the men. My father said to Den, Are you all right? Dad said yes, yes, and uh, my father said, well, you know what you've got to do. His wife, Maggie, to whom he had been married for four years, was heavily pregnant with their first child. My name is Margaret Brotheridge. My father was Lieutenant Dead Brotheridge. Within minutes of landing, the attack on the bridge began. My father got out of the glider 
with his men and rushed to the bridge. As more gliders land, Den Brotheridge charged onto the bridge, catching the German sentries completely by surprise. Those guys were fantastically trained. They knew exactly what they'd been trained to do. All the Germans knew were all these funny people appearing out of nowhere and shooting at them. Amazing act of great courage. With his men behind him, and there was a little sniper nest with a Spandau. Having already shot one sentry, Den then charged the Spandau machine gun position. And they fired, and they caught Den in the neck and he received wounds from which he later died. Den Brotheridge was the first man to die from enemy action on D-Day. This bullet damaged photograph of his wife, Maggie, that he had with him at the time, was passed on to Margaret. The sad thing 